This is a story about a tawdry business, the trading of babies over the internet. It became world headlines when an American mother went online to auction her newborn twins. She sold them not once but twice, taking them back from one set of buyers after another offered double the money. In their short life, the girls, just six months old, have been abandoned by their mum, sold, resold and shipped from America to Britain. It's a sensational case, but not an isolated one, as internet baby traders cash in on America's lax adoption laws, preying on desperate couples and breaking hearts. Last October, Vicky and Richard Allen shopped online to adopt not one, but two precious girls. They were part of their family for a mere two months. Can you believe what's happened to you? Oh gosh, no. This has been, uh, you know, an emotional roller coaster, and it's not one that I would recommend to anyone. It's not. Uh, it's not been uh, fun. We miss them. We do miss them. Across the Atlantic in Britain, another family is riding the very same emotional roller coaster over the very same girls. Well, when you look at this photo, do you see two little girls who you consider to be yours? Yes. They're your children? Yep. Most definitely. And if I never, ever saw them again, I'd still hold that view. One set of twins, two sets of parents. It's made worldwide headlines. The online auction of the internet twins. Sold first to Vicky and Richard Allen, then resold to Judith and Alan Kilshaw, after they offered double the money, $20,000. Does it make any, you feel dirty in any does way? Does it make me feel dirty? No, not really. I, I think the system in America should... Not if you want the truth. If you want me to lie, I can say, yes, it makes me feel awful. But um, no, it's, um, it's just a way of life out there. It started with a click a cyberspace search by two families through the maze of American adoption sites. Let's go down that page. Both chose the same firm, the down. Caring Heart Adoption Agency in California, who happened to have on their books one Tranda Wecker. Tranda had just given birth to twins and they were on the market. The Allens made the first bid. How much did you pay? We agreed to pay 8500 We sent 6000 of that and uh, agreed to pay the remainder. She allowed us to take the girls and start bonding with them immediately. Once she left and the contract had been signed, how sure were you that these girls were going to be part of your family? We, we just immediately let, you know, opened up our hearts and, and just we knew that these were our children and we're going to be here for, for life. But they weren't. Put crudely, the Allens were gazumped. After the Kilshaws came in with a bigger bid, Tranda Wecker, who's since gone to ground, rang to ask if she could spend a final weekend with the twins. It was a cruel trick. The Allens handed them over and haven't seen them since. What was it like for you to discover that your girls had been given to another couple, a couple who had paid twice as much money as you had for them? I, I was pissed. I was very pissed off. Um, I was angry with everyone involved. And I'm still quite upset with, you know, with the people that have been involved in this. The Allens have said of you guys that they cannot believe that mm. you can sleep at night. And I think it's a question that a lot of people would have. Well, how can you sleep at night knowing that you took part in mm. taking those babies out of the country? Well, I don't know how he can sleep at night by lying and making out innuendos that we snatched and stolen the children. So my question is bounced straight back to him. I sleep very well at night, but how does he? And if he can't, take some sleeping pills. The Kilshaws have no regrets. They got the babies. Kiara and Kiara were taken to Britain and renamed Kimberly and Belinda, two new sisters for the Kilshaws, two natural sons. As a parent, do you have any concerns that 
people are getting access to babies, mm. not because they're necessarily good parents, but because they are the highest bidder. I won't change the system whether I like it or I don't like it. The system is in place and has been for years. Do you find this crass? Pardon? Do you find this crass that we're talking uh, about money like this? Not really, because that is in America. And in America, a dollar counts. Everything's a dollar. You live by the dollar, you die by the dollar. Everything's for sale. I, I think most things are in America, being honest. And if you haven't got a dollar, you're absolutely defunct. I am not surprised. I can still be dismayed at the, uh, at the uh, depth of human greed and so on, but it doesn't surprise me at all. Is that what we're talking about here, human greed? I think so, yes. Professor John Crossley is a leading social ethicist with the University of Southern California. He says not only has the internet attracted a huge wave of prospective parents looking to adopt, but in America, the regulations are few and the pickings are rich. If a birth mother wants to sell her children, I'd say that's human greed. And if there are other people who feel that they can uh, be a part of supplying the demand that's there and that the market will bear the price, I say yes, that's human greed. And the whole thing is sleazy enough that I say that anybody who's in that and wants no further scrutiny of his or her activities within that context is driven by greed. Here in California, with its deeply cherished culture of consumerism, virtually anything can be bought and sold. And it seems babies are now big ticket items. More than 40,000 children are traded each year across America by private adoption brokers. And all you need to do is place your order and for the right money, you're pretty much guaranteed of getting whatever you want. We basically wanted, uh, we're hoping for a uh, newborn, uh, Caucasian, uh, ideally uh, dark hair, dark eyes, um, and... Healthy. <laughs> She hmm? loves people. She's trying to get to you right now. Oh. Bruce and Elise Reitlinger are typical of a new breed of parent, cashed up and determined to buy the best. Is that funny? <laughs> How much did the whole process cost you? Let's see. About I think we were 20... probably just shy of $25,000. Where are you going? For the Reitlingers, going? it's not greed that drove them, but love. Their new daughter, Kayla, has made their family complete. It's, uh, it's immeasurable to, uh, to walk into her room in the morning, see her smile, and reach out her arms. To be held and to be picked up and to be loved is, um, it's just amazing. Frequently asked questions are, how long does it take and uh, how much does it cost? The man who delivered their baby and took their money is Duran Cook, a Californian baby broker. Thanks to the net, business is booming. The most I've ever done in a year is 125. Usually we're running at about 80, 85 adoptions a year. Well, thanks for calling. Baby broking has made Duran Cook a wealthy man. But not all his clients are happy. Some have suffered tremendous heartbreak as a result of his work. You have all the hopes and dreams uh, that any other parent would have for their newborn. And when it doesn't happen, you know, it's just like, uh, like losing a child. Two years ago, Doug and Solbrit Garner were eagerly awaiting the arrival of their child. Though it is technically illegal in California to sell babies, it's a very easy law to get around. The payments are simply disguised as living expenses. And the Garners paid out $30,000 in living expenses to this woman throughout her pregnancy. But when the due date passed and there was still no baby, they confronted their broker, Duran Cook. Although I couldn't predict this, I just feel terrible it's happened. The most important thing in your life is your family. And I don't know if I've got one or not. The Garners had been duped. The mother was never pregnant. How strongly did you believe she was pregnant? Uh, very strongly. Uh, when we, we met her on several occasions and she was having a big tummy, 
She was putting our hands on her tummy so we could feel the baby kind of kicking. She was throwing up. She was wearing mother clothes. She did a perfect scenery. But at the end of the day, she was just fat. Yes, she was just overweight. There was no baby in her stomach ever. It took two failed adoptions and more than $100,000 in legal fees and so-called living expenses before the Garners finally got what they wanted, 11-month-old Emma. But they're still struggling with the emotional scars of their experience and the bills. It's, it's very painful to talk about this again, but um, we feel that we have to tell people about what's happened to us so have people can be aware of what can happen and to prevent other people from going through the same pain that we are, have been suffering. In, in this system, uh, we have less regulation than, than much of the world does. So it's a case of buyer beware. When you have the less regulation, it places more responsibility on, as you say, the buyer. But we're not talking about cars here or toys. We're talking about children. Shouldn't there be more regulations? Uh, <clears throat> I think it's just philosophical in part. I mean, our, our country does not regulate as much as a socialistic uh, country does. It just doesn't. Britain is very restrictive. Your age, your weight. The lack of regulations in America is precisely why the Kilshaws shop there. But when they returned to Britain with their internet twins, they became tabloid fodder. You've ruined my children, you've ruined our business, you've ruined our life, and when you've got that, they all go away and leave us to pick up the pieces. Well, how can we after this? After allegations of witchcraft, and tales of squalid living conditions, the British authorities stepped in and took the girls. Sir, you said go further back. Do you live in a pigsty? No, no, I live in a house. My pig lives in the pigsty. Well, actually, he lives in the garage. Does My it... horse lives in the stable, right. and I live in the house. Can, can, can Does I... your house look like a pigsty? No. no. What about this one? I'm a witch, reads the headline, screams the headline. Well, good headline. Thanks, news of the world. I had a nice meal on you had a nice drink on you, and then you do that to me. Thanks, lads. See, all this is very funny, mm. except at the heart of it are two little girls. Well, I, did, I didn't create the headlines. And, uh, well, well headlines. it is relevant to the issue if we're talking about whether or not you're fit well, to be parents. Can, can well, I explain, well, can I I'm not a witch, though. Uh, how do you prove you're not a witch? I mean, you might be able to prove you are a witch if you've got on a broomstick and flew round, but how do you prove you're not? As their saga becomes more and more bizarre, it's hardly surprising to learn that the Kilshaws are now taking phone calls from Hollywood producers. And while this has all the elements of a really bad movie script, the reality is this is a story about two little girls still searching for a loving home. They're only six months old and already they've had three sets of parents and three different names. They're now in the care of the British government as wards of the state and are simply known as case number 7003. In my heart, well, definitely I want them back. Do you think you'll get them back? I go back and forth from day to day thinking I feel this is where they belong. The Allens have now launched legal action in America challenging the Kilshaws adoption. The Kilshaws are suing the British government to get the girls back. And Tranda Wecker, the missing birth mother, well, it seems she now wants the babies back too. If you don't get the girls back, what will you do? Will you go through something like this again? Our focus at this point is on uh, trying to get the girls back. They're children and to just say we'll go on to someone else right now because they're not in our arms is... is not something we're willing to do. This is not appropriate. Back to adopting families, next page. But for the Kilshaws, who are now expert at navigating the baby business... I'm going to ring that. Oh, okay, I'm going to ring it, actually. They're already planning their next shopping trip. What if you don't get the girls back? I would do it again. And I wouldn't forget my first babies because they would still be my babies and I don't know whether they'd remember us or remember this fuss or what had gone on, but I would certainly not stop. I would do it again. 
but I wouldn't come back to Britain. I might go to Australia. <laughs> Scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.